Welcome back, listeners, to Sandman Stories Presents, a folklore podcast where I read you to sleep or until the next story. I'm your host, Dustin. Today we are back in the book of South African folktales collected by James A. Honey. In the first story, Kaka Wits Jackal, and in the second and third, we have two versions of the same story, where we learn that it is not good to swallow a tortoise. The fourth story is also about tortoise being tricky, and the fifth and final story is all about Baboon and his poor judgment. Okay, let's begin. Cock and Jackal It is said that Cock was once overtaken by Jackal and caught. Cock said to Jackal, Please pray first with me before you kill me, like the white man does. Jackal asked, How does the white man pray? Tell me. He folds his hands in prayer, said Cock. Jackal folded his hands and prayed. Then Cock spoke again. You should not look around as you pray. You had better shut your eyes. He did so, and Cock flew away, upbraiding Jackal at the same time with these words. You rogue! Do you also pray? There sat Jackal speechless, because he had been outdone. The End Okay, and story number two, Elephant and Tortoise. Two great powers, Elephant and Rain, had a dispute. Elephant said, You say that you nourish me. How is that so? Rain answered, If you think that I do not nourish you, when I go away, will you not die? And the rain departed. Elephant said, Vulture, cast lots to make it rain for me. Vulture said, I will not cast lots. Then Elephant said to Crow, Cast lots, who answered, Give me the things I need so that I can cast lots. Crow cast lots and rain fell. It rained at the lagoons, but they dried up, and only one lagoon remained. Elephant went to hunting. In the water was Tortoise, to whom Elephant said, Tortoise, stay in the water. And so Tortoise was left behind when Elephant went to hunting. Then came Giraffe, and said to Tortoise, Give me water. Tortoise answered, The water belongs to Elephant. Then came Zebra, who said to the Tortoise, Give me water. Tortoise answered, The water belongs to Elephant. Then came Gemsbok, and said to the Tortoise, Give me water. Tortoise answered, The water belongs to the Elephant. Then came Wildebeest, and said, Give me water. Tortoise said, The water belongs to Elephant. Then came Rudabuk, and said to Tortoise, Give me water. Tortoise answered, The water belongs to Elephant. Then came Springbok, and said to Tortoise, Give me water. Tortoise said, The water belongs to Elephant. Then came Jackal, and said to Tortoise, Give me water. Tortoise said, The water belongs to Elephant. Then came Lion, and said, Little Tortoise. Give me water. When Little Tortoise was about to say something, Lion got hold of her and beat her. Lion drank of the water, and since then, the animals drank water. When Elephant came back from the hunt, he said, Little Tortoise, is there water? Tortoise answered, The animals have drunk the water. Elephant asked, Little Tortoise, shall I chew you or swallow you down? Little Tortoise said, Swallow me if you please. And the elephant swallowed her whole. After elephant had swallowed little tortoise, she had entered his body. She tore off his liver, heart, and kidneys. Elephant said, Little tortoise, you kill me. So elephant died, but little tortoise came out of his dead body and went wherever she liked. The End Another version of the same fable. Story number three. Giraffe and Tortoise, they say, met one day. Giraffe said to Tortoise, I could trample you to death in a blink. Tortoise, being afraid, remained silent. Then Giraffe said, I could swallow you without a second thought. Tortoise said in answer to this, Well, I just so happen to belong to the family of animals who have always been customary to swallow. Then Giraffe swallowed Tortoise. But when the latter was being gulped down, he stuck in Giraffe's throat, and as the latter could not get it down, he
he choked to death. When Giraffe was dead, Tortoise crawled out and went to the crab, the mother of Tortoise, and told her what had happened. Then Crab said, The little crab, I could sprinkle under its arm with Buchu. The crooked-legged little one, I could sprinkle under its arm. Tortoise answered his mother and said, Have you not always sprinkled me, that you want to sprinkle me now? Then they went and fed for a whole year on the remains of the giraffe. The End Okay, and story number four, Tortoises Hunting Ostriches. It is said that one day the tortoises held a council on how they could hunt ostriches, and they said, Let us line up on both sides, stand in rows near each other, and let one go and hunt the ostriches, so that they have to flee to get through the midst of us. They did so, and as they were so many, the ostriches were forced to run along through the middle of them. During this they did not move, but always remained in the same places, calling out to each other, Are you there? And each answered, I am here. Hearing this, the ostriches ran so tremendously that they exhausted their strength and fell down. Then the tortoises assembled by and by at the place where the ostriches had fallen and devoured them. The End Okay, and finally, story number five. The Judgment of Baboon. One day it is said that the following story happened. Mouse had torn the clothes of Ickler, the tailor, who then went to Baboon and accused the mouse with these words. In this manner I come to you. Mouse has torn my clothes, but denies everything and accuses Cat. Cat protests her innocence likewise and says, Dog must have done it but Dog also denies it and declares that Wood must have done it. Then Wood throws the blame on Fire and said Fire did it. Fire said, I have not. Water did it. Water says Elephant tore the clothes. And Elephant says Ant tore them. Thus a dispute has arisen among them. Therefore I, Itkler, came to thee with this preposition. Assemble the people and try to get them in order that I may get satisfaction. Thus he spoke, and Baboon assembled them for trial. When they made the exact same excuses which had been mentioned by Ickler, each one putting the blame on each other. So Baboon did not see any other way of punishing them, except through making them punish each other, and therefore he said, Mouse, give Ickler satisfaction. Mouse, however, pleaded not guilty, but Baboon said, Cat, bite Mouse. So she did. Then he put the same question to Cat, and when she made excuses for herself, Baboon called to Dog, Here, bite Cat. In this manner, Baboon questioned them all, one after another, but they all denied the charge. Then when he addressed them with the following words, Wood, beat Dog. Fire, burn Wood. Water, quench Fire. Elephant, drink Water. Ant, bite Elephant in his most tender parts. They did so, and since that day, they can no longer agree with each other. Ant enters the elephant's most tender parts and bites him. Elephant swallows water. Water quenches fire. Fire consumes wood. Wood beats dog. Dog bites cat. And cat bites mouse. Through this judgment, it clear got satisfaction and addressed the baboon in the following manner. Yes, now I am content, since I have received satisfaction. And with all my heart I thank you, baboon, because you have exercised justice on my behalf and given me redress. Then Baboon said, From today I will no longer be called Jan, but Baboon shall be my name. Since then Baboon walks on all fours, having probably lost the privilege of walking erect through this foolish judgment. The End
Well, in the first story, I liked that the jackal was the fool. Uh, I was confused about the sprinkling in the third story, the buchu. I don't know what it is. I'll have to do some more research on that. The tortoise shouting out during the ostrich hunt was fun, although I was surprised to hear tortoise eating ostrich. And I love chain tales like the baboon one. So I'm still enjoying these stories, and I hope to find more books of South African folk tales. And the podcast shout-out is to the Japanese Archive. Hosts Heather and Thomas cover lots of different stories, myths, history, and literature from Japan. You can tell that they really enjoy learning about Japan and sharing that knowledge with the world. And so if you like their podcast as much as I do, go and give them a listen, a rating, and a review. And the listener shout-out is to Tel Aviv, representing 47% of my listens from Israel. Tel Aviv Yafo is the full name of the city, after it absorbed the neighboring city of Yafo. Tel Aviv is a relatively recent city, only being founded in the 20th century, whereas Yafo is written about in the Bible many times and is also in ancient Egyptian writings. It looks like a beautiful city with lots of history in it, and I would love to go and see it someday. So, to my listeners in Tel Aviv Yafo, I say, Toda, Laka, Valeilatov. Thank you. And good night.